In today's video, I'm going to be measuring my piston ring end gaps. Order some new OEM Mitsubishi piston ring. These are Evo 8 pistons and rods. And I'm also going to be measuring my main and rod bearing clearances, oil clearances, using the ACL race bearings. And here's the tool. Here's what's inside the box. Here's the part number if anybody wants it. So I'm going to take my number one ring, which says 1R, and slide it in here gently. Might need a second hand. Okay, so I got the ring in position, and then I normally just push it down about an inch. I'm using the EVO service manual to do my ring gaps on these EVO 8 pistons. I know it's a DSM block, 4G637 bolt, but this is what the manual says for, let's see, standard value piston ring number one should be from eight to twelve thousandths of an inch. Ring number two should be thirteen to twenty thousandths. I'm just rounding off the numbers. And the limit for number one and number two ring are thirty one thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to stay on the high side of the limit or standard value since it's a daily driver I'm gonna take off a little bit of material since it's very close to 12 thousandths so now that I have all the piston ring end gaps to where I want them to I just put them back in the box and numbered them by cylinder and now I'm gonna move on to the main bearing I'm going to plastic gauge these. These are the ACL ACL race bearings. Here's the split thrust washers. These two grooves point out. They go like that. I'm not gonna put any oil because I'm doing the plastic gauge but if you don't want them falling just use assembly lube so very carefully I'm going to set down this crank like that here I'm installing the main bearings for the main cap, main girdle, whatever you want to call it. This is kind of hard to do by yourself and try to balance a camera on your knee. I'm using ARP main studs for this build. I just run them all the way down till they're hand tight. Ooh, right there is tight. What I do is back it up and like very gently just tighten it up like finger tight. And that's it. I got the plastic gauge for the main journals. You can kind of see it. It's, it's a little hard to see. But they're there. I'm going to put the main bearing cap or girdle. I have all these ARP main bolts just hand tied right now, finger tight. I am going to torque them, but I'm going to wait until I put the plastic gauge for the rods and just torque everything at once. Here's the piston and rods. I have them. Have them numbered. 
Got some coffee filters. Got that idea from Mr. Jaffro. We got the connecting rods in there with plastic gauge. These two weren't so bad, but number one and number four, since they're down there, that was kind of hard to get to with my hand. So let's see how this turns out. I'm going to torque, torque everything right now. I got my ARP main bolts torqued to 60 foot pounds. And all of these rod caps I have them torqued to 15 foot pounds. But the manual calls for a 90 degree turn after the 15 foot pounds. Luckily, this torque wrench reads angles. So I have it set for 90 degrees. Oop. Set it on there. If I can do this with one hand. And. I don't know if you can see, but it starts reading the angles. The nice thing is you can let go. And it knows where you left off. And that's it. One torqued. So now it's time to tear it all back apart. And take some measurements. I even put a little note there. In case I forgot. Well, here's the number one piston and rod out. The plastic gauge. It's between 0 .0015 and two thousandths of an inch. Somewhere around there. I'm not complaining. I wrote down the limit for the rod. It's 0 .0012 to two thousandths of an inch for the rods. So I'm happy with that. I gotta check the rest of them. Okay, I got all of the connecting rods and pistons out. I'm gonna put them back in the box for now. They're all numbered and they all have their the bearings where they came out of. Brand new ACL bearings. Okay, I got all the ARP main bolts out. I got this loose. I don't know if you can see it. Well, yeah, you can see it better here. All the plastic gauge. Starting on the timing belt side, this is going to be number one, two, three, four, and five. So, I'm going to do some measurements and see what I get. So, I measured the bearings. I'm satisfied with my results. I got 0 .0015 on all of them. And I have wrote down for the main journals, my limit is no more than three thousandths of an inch. Should be between eight ten thousandths and fifteen ten thousandths of an inch. I'm satisfied. Now I gotta clean up all this plastic gauge and my mess. Ugh. So now that I have the crank out, I went ahead and pressed out these balance shaft bearings. There's one here and one in here. And I used a 30 millimeter and a 32 millimeter to press these out. Just took my extension here for that one back there and beat it with a hammer. And for that one, I used the 32. These are the new balance shaft bearings. Well, they're going to be blocked off. I'm using new ones because these are a bit rusty and beat up. I'm also going to replace all of the freeze plugs. The way I take out these freeze plugs is hit them on one edge and just beat on them really hard and then once they get like that I just grab a screwdriver and pry here like that and they come out one out I got all of the plugs in 
those two looks looks a lot better brand new I uh, went to Harbor Freight and picked up a big set of sockets that's how I drove them in I was gonna start assembling this putting the crank in pistons bearings but when I was driving in the balance shaft bearing I then realized I was a little crooked and now I have a gap right there so I went ahead and order a new one I could use the old one but it's got a lot of bearing material I'm sure it would be okay but I just went ahead and order a new one the new bearing should be in in two to three days but I'm gonna wrap it up for today